fellow Delmar Fair patrons. I am carnivore. I am predator. Move aside, Tyrannosaurus Rex. I and my fellow Homo sapiens, we're in charge now. We're on top of the food pyramid. By the way, does anyone know what job Tyrannosaurus Rex would have if you were alive and well today? We'd be a military small arms expert. Now being on top of the food pyramid, it is our job, it is our duty to make fun of the herbivores out there. Does anybody know what vegetarian means in Cherokee? It means poor hunter. That's right. I've been around long enough to know how to hunt. Poor hunters are vegetarians. So, this was the way I was. This was the way I felt for up to two years. But then about two years ago, my ankle was killing me. And as I dragged it out of bed, and I dragged it around the rest of the day with me, I said to myself, how am I gonna fix this? I know, more protein. And so that day at lunch, I had a double cheeseburger with extra bacon on a big yeasty bun. And I had my normal, huge, salty grease fries. And then my four helpings of high fructose corn syrup Coca-Cola. Those self-service cola machines were made for gluttons, like I mean for carnivores like me. And I always got my money's worth. And when I was done, I'd go to the bathroom to comb my hair, what's left of it, and I'd feel young again. I would see all of that acne just bursting from my face, just like I was back in high school. Well, as you guys can probably imagine, my ankle was not better that night. It was totally inflamed and it was in agony. I had it wrapped, I had it up on four pillows, and I was popping ibuprofen like they were jelly beans. Well, I was in so much pain I couldn't get a wink of sleep. So the next day, I went off to the doctor. And I talked to the doctor and said, what's up? And he said, well, have you ever hurt yourself? and hurt your ankle, ever twisted it. I said, yes, I'm a trail runner, and every now and then I manage to get into a gopher hole and twist it. He said, I'll just go home and sleep it off, drink plenty of fluids, and try not to pop those painkillers like they're jelly beans. Well, after about two weeks of pain, it eventually went away, but then the symptoms flared up again, only two months later. And this time I decided, Okay, I'm gonna try a new healthcare plan called Go on the Internet and Figure It Out for Myself plan. And after sifting through about 200 pages on the internet, I was able to narrow it down to one of two conditions. I either had gout or leprosy. Now for those in the first row who might be breathing through your noses right now and moving your heads back, don't worry, it's not leprosy. And gout is not contagious. So the next day, I went off to a specialist, and she sucked all this blood out and did a bunch of tests and came back to me and said, Eric, you've got gout. And what gout is, is your body just isn't digesting certain foods very well anymore. So you end up with a lot of uric acid, and it congregates as crystals down in your ankles and makes you feel like you're walking on sandpaper. And I said, yes, that's it. What can we do about it? She said, well, good news, Eric. We live in America, and in America, they have a pill for everything. I said, okay, well, can you show me the side effects? And she said, sure. And she took out of her back pocket what looked to be like a phone book of side effects. And as I'm paging through saying, live with it, live with it, live with it, live with it, I get to one I absolutely can't live with. Some people who take this pill will have their sexual organs wither and fall off. Forget that! No way! Okay, Doc, so what else is the plan here? What else can we do? And she said, well, the alternative is you're going to have to go without all the foods that you absolutely love. No more alcohol. No more bread. Nothing that has yeast in it. Nothing that has high fructose corn syrup. In other words, if you go to the Del Mar Fair, you can't eat anything. Nothing! You might as well just go and speak at these events because that's all you're allowed to do. And she said, now, 
are you lactose intolerant? And I said, no. She said, well, good news, and you can also have milk and dairy. And I looked back and said, well, thanks, Doc. Thanks for the good news. She said, you know, I can tell by your attitude that you're going to fail this diet. You're going to fail. And when you do, the agony is going to be horrendous. It's going to be huge. Huge. The pain will be huge, believe me. Huge pain. And when you fail, I predict you'll be back on bed and you say, please, Doc, please, please give me a pill. Please. Well, my doc must have known exactly what to say. She must have been an amateur psychologist because she knew exactly what to say to make sure I would never want to see her again. So I left her office determined to transition. Yes, to transition from predator to prey, from carnivore to herbivore, from cow eater to glorified cud chewer. And it has not been easy. Well, only a couple weeks ago, I was at Post Toasties. Post Toasties, for those of you who aren't aware, is where Toastmasters go to celebrate what great speakers we are. Tell each other how fabulous we are. Which is a joke to our fellow Toastmasters, but may not be to you. <laughs> so as I'm Post Toasties, this guy looks over and says, Eric, do you think you're superior to us over there eating your celery and drinking your seltzer water? I said, no, guys, I would love to be over on your side having my second six-pack of peas. But there is a silver lining to this diet. I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't eat meat. I work out an hour and a half every day. And as a result, I've been able to lose 20 pounds in the last two years. How about that? 20 pounds. Yeah, show some support. Give it up for the culinary cripple. Yes, thank you. Appreciate it. I said, and my pulse is only 58, and I've been able to get my blood pressure down to 130 over 70. At this rate, I'm gonna live forever. You know what my friend said to me? He said, Eric, no drinking, no smoking, no eating meat, having to work out an hour and a half each day? What's the point of living? What's the point of living? This is what my friends are telling me. Imagine what my adversaries might be saying. Oh, man, we were winning this battle until that lout with gout showed up. Now, now we're in a rout. Well, here's one, unfortunately, I hear way too often from my wife. No, 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 no steak for daddy. Give him the leftover trout. But at least my steak has made me empathetic. Empathetic. That's a combination between empathic and patheticness. And in my new state, I now know that vegetarian does not, in Cherokee, mean poor hunter. It means former, formidable hunter. Now seasoned, sober, salad-eating, fitness, fanatic, 